Hey guys, today we are doing something special. Many years ago, I created a very, very nice artwork piece wrapped around the fridge here in my office, which is inspired by and a great demonstration of what we can do, and it is Captain Morgan. So we wrapped this fridge as an example for customers as they walk in to see what we can do and what we are capable of. Now today I've got a flask here that is for my boss and I need to do something inspirational for him and why not add a captain to this thing that will match the fridge. So follow me along and I'll show you how I do it. Okay guys, we're here by our program. The first thing I need to do is import my image. So now I've already gone ahead and I've made a uh, captain, so to speak, Captain Morgan. Um, this one is far too big, so we're going to make him a bit smaller. Let's go 50 wide. Okay, so now what I wanted to explain here first before we move on to the image on the right hand side is hatch. Now this is quite important when you're doing engraving like this. If you are going to go straight and engrave this with your fiber laser, all you're going to get is an outline around the blue and you're not going to get an engraving down the middle where you actually want it within these areas here I want it to be engraved. So what we have to do is go select our item and we're going to go to our hatch which is at the top over there. Okay so now that we've got hatch open here one thing that we need to have a look at is how we want to engrave this. Do we want to engrave where the middle gets engraved first and then it does the outline or do you want to do the outline first and then engraves in the middle? So I prefer doing the engraving first in the middle and then my outline at the end. So what you need to do is select this option over here and change it so that the one is on the inside. And that will allow you to engrave first and then do your lettering letter. Now we have got a series of options that we can choose on how it's going to be engraved. Now I like to use this particular one purely because it leaves me with very, very minimal gaps between each line engraving and then you need to make sure that your line space is 0.01 make sure that this is not bigger than 0.01 as it will start leaving a much larger gap between each line engraved um, now just before we finish these different options here I'll explain this one this one engraves from the middle outwards and this one we have just going in the same direction just moving from left to right. This one leaves the little dots in between, so as if it's leaving spaces. And then this one is just straight going from left only to right. And then you've got the one going from left to right and it's skipping here in the middle and it's leaving absolutely no lines in between. So that's the one that I'm going to pick. And from here, we can just go and push OK. Now, if you are going to change anything of the type of hatch that you're going to be using on your left hand side of the screen you must always make sure that you go and push apply once you are done otherwise when you go and push engrave there will be nothing that you've changed will actually happen it'll have the original settings so now that we've figured out hatch and how we want this to be engraved, we now need to do our power settings and parameters on the right hand side. So the first thing you're going to need to do is untick use default parameter, otherwise you will not be able to change any settings here. So you've got the option of looping your count, so now this is how many times it's going to engrave, do you want it once, twice, three times, and in this instance I'm leaving it at once. I'm going to change this from 1000 speed millimeters per second to 300. I want it to go a little bit slower so it can penetrate through the top layer of metal. And then we're going with 70% power purely because I don't want it to warm up the metal too much that it warps as well. If you have your power anything over 80% it will definitely do so to thinner material. Next thing we're going to have is our 20% frequency, which I do recommend just leaving as it is. If you're going to do aluminium or something else other than straight steel, then you would recommend changing this up to a higher number. From there, I'm going to leave these settings as they are and we can go and say apply default. Alright, now that we've done our power settings, what I like to do before we go and even think about engraving on our actual item, I normally have a piece of steel with me 
like such. And this is basically what I use to just do examples to make sure that my A, the level is correct, and B, that I'm getting my power settings correct, just to engrave a smooth finish. Okay, so here is my flask, and what I need to do is just make sure, obviously, the flask is in the right place. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and push F1, which is red, and that will show me where my engraving is going to be. So now that we can see where it's going to be, I want to further line this up, and I'm using this towel just to even it out, purely because you can see that this is not a flat item. It's got a bigger side over here. So I'm using just this towel just to level out my, my flask, and we're gonna move it to around about here, making sure that it's straight. Okay, cool, so now that we've gone ahead and done that, now is the time that I'm gonna be using my piece of steel, because first thing we need to do is make sure the height of our actual laser head is correct because if it isn't and you push engrave and you try and move it up and down while it's engraving it's going to mess up your engraving completely and i can give you an example here if you go ahead and look at the word brad you can see these pitted marks in various places and the engraving did not come out how it's supposed to eventually we got to the right setting the right height and that's how it came out which is what i'm looking for so we always got to make sure that we do it on something else first, just to make sure it actually is level. Otherwise it's not going to work. So from here, we're going to go and push mark and select continuous and keep moving and adjusting until we get to the right height. Okay, so now we're just going to let it engrave a little bit, see whether or not it's going to actually engrave nicely. What you could do, which is better is to go ahead and stop it change it over to a white side so that you can actually see the engraving itself so go ahead push mark again and as we can see it is actually engraving and it is engraving really well it's consistent i can see that there isn't any lighter areas and much darker areas so i think that our level of height here is actually spot on now, a one mil thickness in material isn't going to make a difference for the height of your engraving. The moment you go between five and one centimeter, then it starts becoming a problem and you have to go and change your settings. So for now, I'm happy with this. I'm going to push stop. And now we can remove this and safely say that we are ready to engrave. Okay guys, we're about to start engraving, but I have a question. How do I know the effect and what it's going to look like once we've engraved? Are we going to burn the steel? Are we going to just remove the paint? And that's a question I have. So my answer is I just want to remove the top layer of anodizing off the flask. I don't want to burn and mark the metal itself. If you're wanting to do that and go ahead and burn and mark the metal, further than what I'm going to, I suggest just increasing your loop count to achieve this matter. So here's an example here in front of me. So if we have a look at, let's say, the Captain Morgan and our, a picture of a Porsche here, you can see that these are very light versions of engravings. Whereas if you had to move over to the word Brad here, that one is extremely darker than these other two. So this here, I had done about four loop counts versus only one here, and that's the different types of engraving that you'll receive. So here, on my flask, I have not only got white, but I've got blue on the top surface and then steel underneath. So I am more than happy not to burn the metal, but just to remove the top layer of the paint. So that is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I've made sure that it's aligned again and it's in the right place. I'm ready to go ahead and push engrave. So let's see how it goes.
All right, guys, we've had a look at it and I see there's a bit of burning and that is due to the actual color in the anodizing itself. Now, for that, we could just take it up, wipe it with some solution and then that should be gone. But a lot of people use uh, another method where we clean the top surface with a quick engrave where we do it at a thousand millimeters per second and we do it at a much less power. So instead of using maybe 70%, we'll drop it down to maybe 40 to 50 and we run it at a thousand millimeters per second and that should clean the top surface quickly without actually burning into the metal. Because if we have a look here, in certain areas there is no burning whatsoever of the actual paint anodizing itself and it's only happening in the more concentrated bigger areas. So that tells me that I can actually just clean it off with a quick engraving and I don't have to wipe it down. So let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, now that we've finished that last cleaning layer on our engraving, it is now actually finished. So now all I'm going to do is just wipe it down with some sugar soap, you can also use sunlight and a cloth just to clean off any debris and then we are finished. All right guys, I actually think that this came out really well. Um, we did have a bit of an issue, the anodizing is a little bit thick, but if you do that cleaning like we did on the second time around, it should fix your problem. Now I really hope that my boss enjoys this, I think it came out really well and it is a lovely example to go with on the engraving side and for Captain Morgan. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. marks the 10th anniversary of am.co.za in the South African market. And through that time, we have experienced considerable growth and expansion with the support of our valued customers. To mark our 10th anniversary, we have bought a warehouse at Sunny Rock in East Grand, and we will commence with renovation and construction in 2023. The facility will comprise a massive 2,000 square meter warehouse, 300 square meters of demonstration space, 150 square meters of sales space, and 400 square meters of spare part storage on the top floor. 550 square meters of showroom space on the middle floor. 400 square meters for Machine Dot Africa for machine repairs with its own dedicated entrance. And a 250 square meter tea garden and coffee shop for your convenience. Our group now comprises four businesses. AM.co.za is our main business and supplies the machines, spare parts and consumables. Machine.Africa does the installations for our clients and handles on-site and factory repairs. Ambitious Academy ensures that our clients achieve the very best levels of productivity by providing training and certification. And our automated AI-driven online store, Buy This, brings all products online and distributes countrywide. We invite you to be part of this exciting journey as we establish our new headquarters. Watch as the process unfolds and be part of the adventure to meet all of your machinery and productivity needs with this magnificent new facility. AM.co.za. Achievement matters.